So I'm going to read to you from this book, Liberty, um, about Paul Revere. Paul Revere was a colonist, and he was part of the early Revolutionary War. Uh, the title of this is One If By Land, Two If By Sea. One day, two young men in old brown suits with red handkerchiefs tied around their necks strolled out of Boston. They kicked at stones, whistled, and tried to look innocent. But almost everyone they met recognized them for what they were, British spies. General Gage had ordered spies to scout the countryside toward Lexington and Concord. Those are two towns in Massachusetts near Boston, not too close. He thought the colonists had guns and ammunition hidden in the area. And he also suspected that two important leaders of the Sons of Liberty, Samuel Adams and John Hancock, were hiding nearby. It would be a great blow to the colonists' cause if he could capture them. Until they are sent home prisoners, General Gage wrote, I fear we shall have no peace. Finally, his plan was ready. Hoping to surprise the Americans, he gave the order to attack at night on April 18th, 1775. But the Americans were ready for him. Two lanterns were hung in the steeple of Old North Church to warn that the Redcoats were on the march. Paul Revere saw the signal, hurried to the Charles River, and was rowed across by a friend. When they reached the other side, Revere borrowed a horse, leaped into the saddle, and galloped off toward Concord to give the alarm. The regulars are out, he yelled and raced on. The regulars were the British troops, also known as the Redcoats because they wore red, right? When men heard his shout, they dressed quickly and loaded their muskets, which were the guns they used. Meanwhile, the Redcoats were hurrying down to the docks. Boats carried them across the Charles River. At the other side, there wasn't any dock. To reach land, the Redcoats had to jump out of their boats into icy water and thick mud. The first men to wade ashore just stood there, freezing and miserable, until all the rest had arrived. Finally, soaked and muddy, the Redcoats marched off, shivering, down the dark road to Lexington. But as they marched, they heard an unwelcome sound. Church bells were tolling, that means they were ringing. Drums were beating the alarm. General Gage's secret attack was a secret no more. And why? Because of Paul Revere. He went and warned them ahead of time. It says, to cross the Charles River, it's a river in Boston. I used to live very close to it. Paul Revere had to pass very close to the Somerset, a British man of war armed with 64 cannons. I might have talked about a bit of a crazy warship. The least noise might give him away. At the last minute, he thought of wrapping the oars, remember the things that you, that you paddle with, in cloth to muffle their sound. There was no time to waste, so he asked a lady for her petticoat, which is like basically what they used to wear under their dresses. And like not underwear, but like it was like a layer under their dresses. She threw it down to him from a window. In later years, Paul Revere would tell his grandchildren that when the petticoat fluttered into his hands, it was still warm. And on the other thing it says, the townspeople of Concord buried their guns and ammunition in haystacks and freshly plowed fields so British spies wouldn't see them. When they received warning of a British attack, they would dig them up, arm themselves, and be ready to fight. So, they see the haystacks right there. And we see some pictures of Paul Revere. See Paul Revere on his horse, riding off to warn the people that the British were coming. So he's very famously said, his quote is, the British are coming, the British are coming. That's a Paul Revere quote. So, hope that is helpful. I will find some more resources for you guys later. See you later. Bye.